In this reaction, we're going to be watching why did the Ottoman sultans kill their brothers? That is, why did the Ottoman sultans kill their brothers? And this one was suggested by, I do believe, philosopher MMA. Reminded me, thank you for reminding me for, to watch this year, you know, because this song's real interested. Welcome back, and ting, and ting, and ting. I'm Mr. Giant, and we go go right into this to see why the Ottoman Sultans kill their brothers. Let's YouTube it, Sim Simmer. The history of the Ottoman Empire is well researched, yet it is still controversial as many of the practices and traditions were unique to this realm, which was itself unique both for Europe and the Middle East. Among these practices was the execution of the Sultan's brother after the ascension to the throne. The fratricide continued for centuries, and in this video we discuss its history. Hmm. But before we continue with the video, we would like to thank our sponsor, Vikings War of Clans. Vikings was inspired by the famous strategy games of the 90s, which we all loved, like the Command and Conquer series. If you want to relive the nostalgia and etch new memories, this browser game with fantastic graphics is what you're looking for. You can reign empires, fight over resources, forge new alliances, and compete in massive live battles against friends or NPCs. Vikings constantly adds new cool features, and strategy fans should definitely give this game a try since it's completely free to play. There are more than 20 million active players. Become one of them. Support our channel by downloading Vikings for free from the links in the description and get the special bonus of the Interesting. location item and 200 gold coins for a kickstart. Although feudalism was the dominant political system almost everywhere in the world throughout the Middle Ages, it had different flavors in every region. Middle Eastern feudalism was heavily influenced by the Sassanid system, which was more vertical than its Western European counterpart. The ruler had direct control over all the land, which was then conditionally granted to the lower nobility for military or administrative service. Meanwhile, the governors of the regions were not feudal lords, but rather administrative representatives. The Seljuks and the Mongols mostly continued using this system with an important distinction. These you know, isn't it amazing how we create these complex systems uh, to govern ourselves, you know what I mean? And, and usually the, the ordinary people don't really understand how the system works. And this is proven like right now, right where I am. Most people don't even understand how the system works. The only people who truly understand how the system works are the ones that are in charge of the system. And some of them, <laughs> quite a few of them, take advantage of this to uh, enrich themselves, you know what I mean? So when the people don't know what the system is like, up there they're enriching themselves, you know? Now, at, uh, back in the day, uh, Back in those times, you know, uh, I don't think man has changed that much. You have the ordinary working class people who just, they just tell, you know, work hard and you shall overcome, you know. So people are just out there working. But other people are manipulating the system because they understand it because they control the system. Yeah, you know, and I guess that's how really and truly how kings and uh, sultans and, you know, emperors and them are able to like totally dominate societies. Let's keep going. These empires were divided between the sons of the leaders. The Ottomans were not the direct descendants of the Seljuks, yet they saw that the division of the empire between the Seljuk princes was disastrous. However, after the first Sultan, Osman I, died in 1324, his son Orhan offered his brother Ala ad-Din to divide the burgeoning empire, but the latter refused probably knowing that this arrangement would make future civil wars inevitable. Many events influenced the change in the Ottoman succession laws. The first was the Battle of Kosovo in 1389. According to the various sources, the Sultan Murad I died either during or after the battle, becoming the first and only Ottoman ruler to be killed in action. Murad did not designate an heir, so a conflict between his sons Bayezid and Yakub was imminent. 
Again, the sources are conflicted here, but some claim that Yakub was killed by his brother in the chaos of battle. The next succession would prove even more tricky. Bayezid I was defeated by Timur at Ankara in 1402 and became his hostage. His four sons, supported by the Timurids, Byzantines, Serbia and local Turkic Beyliks, entered an 11-year-long civil war, the longest in Ottoman history. The empire was never so close to falling. As external influence was a factor in this civil war, the Ottoman sultans mostly stopped entering into dynastic marriages during this period, and foreigners would not become a part of the Ottoman harems. It was becoming clear that the old nomadic practice of letting the princes decide who is the strongest among them was leading to more conflicts. True. So Mehmed II became the first sultan to officially start his reign with a fratricide, as he ordered the execution of his eight-month-old half-brother. He legalized this fratricide. Wait a minute! He killed his eight-month-old brother. Eight months. But you see, then again, you know, people would put, like, nine-year-olds in charge and stuff back then. So I guess, you know, I guess he was sort of a historian. <laughs> he realized, you know what I mean? That eight-month-old eight, you know, eight month old is, a, is a, a threat to my rules. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. That is that is nuts. I mean, I have two brothers, and I, I ain't never thought about killing them for anything, you know? I mean, we're not rich, so I guess there's no... Nothing to well, we all got some land, you know, but still, I ain't never thought about killing them. They could have it, <laughs> they could have the house. I don't know, no, 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 I ain't killing nobody over nothing like that. So they have me. These words, whichever of my sons inherits the Sultanate, it behooves him to kill his brothers in the interest of world order. Most jurists have approved politics, let the action be taken accordingly. Strangulation would become the most popular type of execution for the Ottoman princes, as with this method, their blood would not be spilled. Wow. Mehmed was also the first to name an heir apparent, his son Jem. This prince and his brothers were appointed governors of various regions to learn statecraft. At the time, Constantinople became the Ottoman capital, and the distance to it became an important factor in the succession. In order to ensure that Jem would become the next sultan, Mehmet needed him to reach the capital faster than his other son, Bayezid. However, as soon as Mehmet passed away in 1481, the Janissaries revolted in Constantinople, and the messengers sent to Jem were captured. So Bayezid entered the capital before his brother and became the new sultan. Still, a short civil war between the brothers took place. Jem was defeated and exiled, but remained a headache for Bayezid for more than a decade. Similar events transpired at the end of the rule of Bayezid II in 1511, but this time his heir, Ahmed, attempted to take the throne while his father was still alive, which forced the other prince, Selim, to start a rebellion in Thrace. Selim was defeated by Bayezid and retreated to Crimea, while Ahmed was denied entry to the city. Soon the Janissaries and the Viziers revolted against Bayezid, and Selim I became the new sultan. The latter defeated and killed his siblings Ahmed and Korkut. The succession oh of Solomon in 1520 was peaceful, as most of his brothers died very young. To ensure the loyalty of his youngest sibling, Uveis, Suleiman sent him to the furthest province of the empire, Yemen. Exile, the Ottoman much. realm reached the peak of its power during the reign of Suleiman, civil wars would occur again by the end of his rule. Suleiman broke tradition and started accepting foreign consorts into his harem, and some of these consorts gained never-before-seen influence, ushering what would later be called the Sultanate of Women. Among them were Mahidevran, who was either from Crimea or Albania, and Urem from Ruthenia and their rivalry shook the empire. Mahidevran's oldest son, Mustafa, was the designated successor of Suleiman, yet Hurem knew that upon the succession of Mustafa, her sons would get strangled. She managed to use the help of an allied Grand Vizier to turn Suleiman against him. No, no, the rivalry 
Are they from different? It seems like there's different mothers and stuff there. Wow. Because uh, that's, that's what's happening here. They got mothers involved, you know what I mean? And they, can you imagine knowing if somebody win, your, your son's going to get strangled? So, of course, they're going to put up a fight. I mean, they're not going to go down. <laughs> that is crazy, man. That's crazy how they had that thing set up. Mustafa, who ordered the execution of his oldest son. Hurem's sons, Salim and Bayezid, what? were the last remaining princes, and they started a civil war while their father was still alive. Suleiman supported Salim and defeated Bayezid had to find refuge at the Safavid court. However, this escape was temporary. Soon Suleiman either bribed or threatened the Safavid Shah Tamasp, and Bayezid was strangled along with his four sons. In 1566, Salim II became the Sultan. All these events created an interesting practice. A prominent historian of the Ottoman Empire, Leslie Pierce, calls it temporary reproductive monogamy. The Ottoman princes would only be intimate with one concubine before coming to power, and would use medical means to have just one male heir. So by the time they would assume the throne, this heir was in his teens or twenties. So when Selim II passed away in 1574, his successor, Murad III, had no difficulty executing his siblings. All five were extremely young and still in the palace, which meant that they commanded no influence and had no party supporting them. Murad III also had one older heir, Mehmed. But Murad was fecund and sired at least 20 more sons after he became the Sultan. The new Sultan, Mehmed III, ordered the execution of all 20 of his brothers. According to the sources, this horrified the population of the capital. 20 little coffins were moved from the palace to the mausoleum, and the citizens witnessed it. This became one of the reasons the practice of fratricide was curbed. Another reason was that Mehmed III's successor, Ahmed I, was just 13 when he came to power and had no heirs. The only other living male representative of the Ottoman line was even younger Mustafa, and killing him could have ended the dynasty if Ahmed failed to procure an heir down the line. Ahmed I died in 1617, and as his sons were too young, his brother, Mustafa I, was brought to power by a court clique, marking the first time seniority was used in Ottoman succession. During this period, the rules of succession changed in one more way. No longer were the Ottoman sultans legally allowed to execute their brothers. The new rule stated that any sultan wishing to get rid of his siblings needed to ask the chief religious and judicial figure, the Shikul Islam, permission to do so, and this permission was often denied. In response, the sultans stopped sending their relatives to be governors of regions and kept them in what was called Kathis, the golden cage. That meant that most of the possible heirs were left uneducated and inexperienced in governmental affairs, which in turn became a reason why the sultans of the 17th and later centuries were less skilled. At the same time, various cliques within... It's nice that, that's, that's kind of interesting because, you know, by doing that, it sort of started the, the, the demise of the, of the empire. You know what I mean? Killing them off almost did it as it said there, but then keeping them uneducated and not being able to lead, when you're gone, if they can't lead, other places are going to take over. Wow, that's crazy, man. The, the, the power, the, you know, the here and now power is a, is a, is a powerful thing. <laughs> In the capital, gained a new way to influence the sultans, as a new member of the dynasty was just one rebellion away from being brought to power. We will continue to cover various topics concerning the history of the Ottoman Empire, so make sure you are subscribed to our channel and have pressed the bell button. We would like to... Wow, that is crazy, man. They legalized killing the brothers and thing just so that they could maintain power. I wonder if it's greed or if they actually think that they are, they are capable of helping the people or if it's just wanting that power. You know what I mean? And think, comment down below. Let me know what's going on. Once again, I think it's Philosopher MME. 
thank you again for uh, you know suggesting i'll leave a link in the description so you could go to uh kings and generals and, and watch the watch all that ottoman empire thing you know what i mean uh in the meantime you all take care of each other all right cool runnings